The Lord be with you. Well, friends, we are nearing the end of this Lenten season, uh, which I trust has been busy for you, uh, I hope has been holy for you. And we come to the most intense part of this 40 days, uh, which is the final week, what we call Holy Week, or sometimes Passion Week. Uh, This is the week that we focus on the impending crucifixion of our Lord Jesus. It says in Matthew's Gospel, Then Jesus went with his disciples to a place called Gethsemane, and he said to them, Sit here while I go over there and pray. He took Peter and the two sons of Zebedee along with him, and he began to be sorrowful and troubled. Then he said to them, My soul is overwhelmed with sorrow to the point of death. Stay here and keep watch with me. Holy Week is kind of like trying to keep watch with Jesus. Uh, There is an intense heaviness to it. There is an intense amount of discipline and presence, uh, an intense amount of intentionality. And there are moments of sorrow and fear and frustration and darkness. Uh, But we're reminded that Jesus called us into this. Uh, He sees some kind of benefit for him and for us when we go through this, and we sit and watch and pray with him. Too often, I think we in the church get busy during this last week. We're busy planning visitations with people. We're planning our Easter outfits. We're shopping. We're planning our Easter meal. Uh, And it's very easy to not spend time sitting and watching and waiting with Jesus. But I think that would be a grave error on our part. This is a very sacred and holy time of the year. Zion tries to offer things for all of us to be able to participate a little bit more intentionally, a little bit more deliberately and devotionally as we go through this very intense week. Uh, You are more than welcome, if you're in the area, to participate in one or in all of these. And even if you're not in the area, there are some virtual opportunities as well. So we begin the week with uh, Stations of the Cross. Uh, We follow a biblical Stations of the Cross outline uh, where the sanctuary is open Uh, twice a day on Monday, Tuesday, and Wednesday. Once in the morning during our regular office hours, so you can come between 10 a.m. and 1 p.m. And then once in the evening from 6 to 8 p.m. These are self-guided tours, or they're little booklets to walk you through the 14 stations that have some pictures scripture associated with them, and um, every once in a while there are some other three-dimensional objects just to to draw our attention, to draw our contemplation to these steps, these stages, these events that led from the Garden of Gethsemane to Jesus being placed in the tomb. And we intentionally lay out the sanctuary in such a way that the 14th station ends up near our prayer cross so that one of the final things that you can do is to uh, sit and contemplate at the foot of the cross and even write out a personal prayer and just roll it up, slip it in one of the knot holes in the prayer cross. Uh, And we collect these up through Easter Sunday. Uh, After Wednesday, we then offer our first worship gathering of the week, which is on Monday, Thursday. We gather here in the sanctuary at 7 p.m. This is Tenebrae worship. Uh, Tenebrae is a service of shadows. 
So the first half, uh, we focus on the Lord's Supper because it is the Last Supper where Jesus instituted this holy and sacred sacramental meal for the church. Uh, And therefore, we intentionally celebrate it on this night. And then the second half is the Tenebrae, where we go through seven readings after Jesus shared this Last Supper with his disciples. Seven readings that lead to his betrayal and arrest and uh, part of the false trial that's done on his behalf. Each time we do a reading, we snuff out one of the candles and the sanctuary grows darker and darker until finally it is in complete darkness and we leave that night in silence. We gather again on Good Friday at 1 p.m., And uh, we have worship again. This time it is a stripping of the sanctuary ceremony. So uh, we read the texts that walk us through the trial before Pilate on the day after Jesus' arrest. Uh, We intentionally carry the cross into the sanctuary to remind ourselves of the journey that Jesus went on to Golgotha, to the, the place of the skull. Uh, We carry nails with us throughout our time of worship to remind ourselves that it's our sin that put Jesus on the cross. And then uh, we take some time to strip the sanctuary bare to remind ourselves what it is to sort of visually lose the things of God in our presence. And at the end, we have an opportunity uh, after some time of personal silence to come forward and to drop those nails in the bucket at the foot of the cross, reminding ourselves that ultimately uh, we are giving everything, our sin and our hopes and our very selves to Jesus. And we're hanging all of that on the cross with him. Uh, We offer nothing on Holy Saturday. We trust that that is a time of quiet reflection and preparation for you. And then on Easter Sunday, there are two opportunities. Uh, The first is a sunrise gathering at King Park here in Sheboygan. Uh, It is there that we have a very quiet, uh, a very simple ceremony Uh, sort of marking and remembering what it was like for the first people who arrived at the tomb. It was very quiet. It was a very small gathering. And there's a lot of confusion, but also the first seeds of joy and hope. And then we gather back here uh, in our sanctuary for our normal 945 worship time. Uh, This has all three Uh, teams, musical teams. Uh, So it's a very full, a very rich, a very participatory and celebratory worship gathering where we remember the true joy of the risen Lord and the hope that that continues to give us throughout the remainder of the year, throughout the remainder of our lives. So again, I pray that this is a holy Advent season for you. I'm sorry, Lent season for you. And I pray specifically that this is a good holy week. Even though, yes, it can be heavy, even though it can be sorrowful, there is something about sitting and watching and praying with Jesus where we get to experience his love in a way that we don't any other time of the year. So until we see each other in person or until we see each other again virtually, May the peace of God be with you. Amen.